In front of me is a two GPU laptop, but it's not using the M series GPUs as many of you know at this point. NVIDIA and AMD have both moved away from this idea of M suffixed GPUs for notebooks. And that's shown here. This is a pretty insane one. The whole point of this video is just to talk about how it works primarily, and I'll get to this in a moment, that the unit has two of these power bricks, two, and they both plug into a single adapter, which you can see here. So brick one, brick two, plug into an adapter, and then that plugs into the laptop. So I'm going to talk about why it's done that way as opposed to a single brick. But as for what this thing is, this is a CyberPower fan book for Extreme. It's got two GTX 1080s in it, and it has an Intel K-Spec CPU. We previously talked about this CPU and overclocked it even, but uh, today we're focusing on the GPU part of the, the laptop, which is the fact that it's got two of them. The main thing here, first of all, uh, this is sort of like the Titan MSI notebooks that you've seen in the past. It has a mechanical keyboard. I think it has red switches. It might have brown, though. But it's got a mechanical keyboard with brown or red switches. Uh, there's a very small battery. I'm going to try and lift this up and show you. And that battery is up here in the corner. So this is actually really small for what the thing is. This big black bar right here is the back plate for the keyboard. So that's the back plate on the other side, as you'll see in our B-roll, is the keyboard with the switches. And they are, again, mechanical, so it is bigger. And that adds to the uh, sort of fatness of the notebook, we'll call it. Uh, but this battery is small. And the reason it's small is because why would you have a big one when there are Effectively, there's 700 watts of components in front of me in GPUs, CPU, RAM, all this stuff. It even supports two NVMe SSDs. Uh, there are three total M2 slots. One is SATA, two are NVMe, and uh, two 1080s or two 1070s if you get the cheaper SKU. But this unit is $3,800. So uh, when you've got all that stuff, having a bigger battery just doesn't matter because you're really not running this thing off battery life ever. The only purpose of this battery is to keep the thing alive if you unplug it and move it from one location to another. It's not meant to be gamed on. You probably won't even sustain or processing. But that's not the point of the laptop. It is a desktop replacement. And from a technology standpoint, whether it's practical or not, it is interesting to talk about. That's because this splitter is accepting two power inputs from two AC drops, which are these. These are power bricks. These particular ones are 330 watts each. So you've got uh, cumulatively 660 watts here in power bricks in front of me, but 330 watts each individually. And then those connect here. If you have the unit that's got two 1070s instead of two 1080s, which this has, uh, then these would actually be 230 watts. So 100 watts less per brick with the two 1070 setup, but still two bricks. So in speaking with CyberPower, the reasoning here is that uh, it's basically a standards and ratings type of thing, standard safety, standards ratings, where once the companies exceed a 330-watt power drop, as I'm calling it for the unit, it starts entering a class of industrial components. And that has different certifications, different safety ratings, different cost to build. So it just becomes really not feasible for the manufacturers to do where they can create a single 600 plus watt brick. I mean, think about it. That's, that's an entire power supply for your average DIY desktop. That is a lot of power. So they split it into two and then pretty simply uh, spit it into this adapter here, which almost looks like an XLR pinout, but not quite. Uh, but it takes two there and then outputs one, which plugs into the laptop. So it's kind of cool, interesting stuff to know. Practical, maybe not, but definitely interesting. Just speaking to the laptop, obviously I haven't had time to test this. We are in Southern California now shooting this, so I don't have my lab set up to, to run thermal tests, but I can look at it and tell you about what's going on. Uh, just from a technology standpoint for cooling, there's a set of three primary fans. There's one on either side. The CPU is here in the center, and that's pretty easy to tell from a few main things. One, uh, it's got the spring tensioned screws holding down the socket cover and the cold plate to the CPU. And I'll just I'll hold this up a little bit. I can't disconnect this panel, unfortunately. There we go. So CPU is right there. 
uh, GPU number one is right here, and GPU number two is here. And the other way to tell that is because you can actually see the PCIe slot here and here. And this PCIe slot, if you are not familiar with laptops, is because these are MXM boards for the GPUs. So this isn't like a soldered to motherboard design like is the case with older laptops when they were uh, less demanding of bandwidth, less complex, less power hungry or whatever may be the case with each different generation. These are MXM boards. Uh, so they plug into a PCIe slot. Theoretically, you could actually replace one if something went wrong with just the GPU and not the rest of the system. But losing just the GPU in this case would be very expensive because they're 1080s. So that's the setup. Two RAM slots in the bottom. Uh, if you happen to have one of these units, the, the Fanebook for Extreme or the MSI equivalent, MSI is the OEM, then you would basically unscrew all of these obvious screws in the panel. And there's a couple hidden ones too. And those hidden ones are on the other side. So if we flip this over, which I'm not going to do, uh, there are two rubber bumpers that sit between the top of the chassis where the keyboard is and the screen when it closes. You peel those off, there's two more screws in there. So that's the, the secret to taking this apart. And then there's also, roll out a shot and grab this, uh, this part, the sort of wings that go and cover the hinge for the screen, uh, the display, and the body. So that's how it goes together. That's how the cooling kind of works at a top level. I guess I didn't talk about this third fan. This fan is for the CPU. It pushes or pulls, uh, I'm not sure which without really testing it, but through this panel here, and then almost certainly pulls. Uh, and then these fans on the sides are kind of like blower fans in uh, just in the way they look, but they're not. Actually, they're still axial fans. So that is the Fanebook 4 Extreme, and it's the two GTX 1080 units. Again, as always, links in the description below for more information. Patreon link the post show video helps out directly. Subscribe for more content. I'll see you all next time.